Eric Mangini, NFL coach, Jetson Browns, Fox Sports NFL analyst. Love having him on. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, I, want, I want your opinion on Tua. Uh, Got to be honest, I was worried after the Rams game. It's early, but I thought he was twitchy. and, and I mean, I knew he was accurate. He was, he's been accurate every – I saw his high school footage. Accuracy is not my concern, but <laughs> I got to be honest with you. He made a lot of quick, quick, quick decisions in the red zone. I, he was better than I thought. I didn't know if he had that in him. What, what did you think? Yeah, all, all along, it, we talked about it a, a few weeks ago. I didn't know if his start was a function of that being part of the plan or, or the, the success that Herbert had had and organizationally they were pushing him in. Then you watch the first game and you've got some real concerns because it was a, a fairly pedestrian performance. But watching this past game, what you're excited about if you're a Mi- Miami Dolphins fan is the poise that he had and the and the presence that he had. The Cardinals brought not only a, a volume of blitzes, but they brought a variety of blitzes. And he did a really good job of, of identifying what was coming and getting the ball to the right place. And then, as you said, he throws a, a an extremely catchable ball. Yeah. I thought his, his placement was, was very good. But outside of all of those things, you could see that Arizona was saying, okay, we're going to test how good this guy can decipher what we're bringing. And he did a an outstanding job with that. You know, this this Carson Wentz a, a, a coordinator came out and said he's too reckless. Every play is the last play. And this is an interesting question for you because you briefly had Brett Favre. And I said, there's a lot of things you can elevate a player in. But a quarter, Phil Mickelson has always been reckless as a golfer. And he's been he was reckless at 18. He's reckless now, despite the money, the earnings. Uh, Brett Favre in Minnesota, it, it, it never changed. It's who he is. And my question with Wentz is, he is reckless. Sam Darnold's reckless. I don't, I've never seen a quarterback go from reckless to cautious. Like, this is how Jameis <laughs> plays, right? Like, is it, you, you're a coach. How, have you seen quarterbacks be reckless? And then four years later, they're very smart. They don't make mistakes. Yeah, I, look, I had those conversations with Brett Favre, and this was at the end of his career, just trying to say, Every, every single throw doesn't have to be, you know, in, inside of a tight window, and it's okay to throw the ball away. But it, it's hard for me to put Carson Wentz in, in Brett Favre's category. And and I think some of this criticism that's coming this year is is a little bit unfair. And and when you look at his his body of work, he's he's thrown almost three times as many touchdowns and interceptions over the last three years. And this year, it's more of a, of a 50-50 situation. But it's dramatically different in terms of, of what he's dealing with. He's at a game where he's been sacked eight times. He's at a game where he's been sacked six times. And I think Carson, why you love him, is and especially you, Colin, I know you love him fiercely, is because of his grittiness, because of, of the chances that he takes. And he makes some plays with that. And, and, and he makes some really good plays. But it feels like he's pushing a little bit too hard right yeah, now. Yeah. And that's where the volume of mistakes come in. Now, my fear with, with Carson Wentz isn't the interceptions. It's holding the ball too long, and it's whether or not he can survive the season because he takes hits, and I've said this since his rookie season, he takes hits that, that he doesn't need to take. He doesn't need to get hit for a three- or four-yard game. That, that's not, that part has got to be improved. Otherwise, it won't matter. He just won't be on the field. You know, so I, I said it this week, and it, it was speculation by me, but I said – Belichick will probably end up winning five games this year, and that means they're not going to get a top 10 pick. They'll probably be 10 or 11 or something. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they will. But Belichick, I've never said tanking, but he's too smart to want to be 8-8, eight and 9-7, eight, and, and, and 10 and 6, but not have a quarterback. And I don't see the solution at quarterback. I don't think it's Cam. I don't think it's Garoppolo. And I don't think he's getting one of the three college guys. Wouldn't it be easier to just do a Coughlin and Parcells, go down to the Sun in Jacksonville and, and get Justin Fields or go to Los Angeles with the Chargers if Anthony Lynn gets booted and take Justin Herbert. Why, Brady left and it shocked all of us. Why couldn't Bill Belichick leave New England and make his life easier for the next five years? Well, I, I, think, he, I think he loves New England. I don't think. I know he loves New England. He's got a house in Nantucket. And what, what do you hear from Tom Brady now as he talks about his new situation? He talks about the, the fact that they're struggling because there's not continuity. Bill has continuity. Bill has two of his kids that, that, that are working with him. He grows his own coaches. He's got the organization, you know, the support staff, the scouting staff, all those different areas 
take your pick. They know what to expect. And that continuity goes goes a long way. He's down a little bit this year. And, and the whole idea of tanking that was talked about last week, you can tell by the, the happiness that they had in beating the Jets. This is this is far from a team that's tanking. But I, 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 I also think he values Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft traded a first-round draft pick for him when he had one winning season as a head coach. He made an incredible investment and a great investment. And their work and relationship, which sometimes is characterized as being a little bit contentious, I don't think that. I think there's great mutual respect, and it's not every owner is like that. Robert Kraft is unique in in a lot of ways. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, I want to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are better than I thought. But it's never easy. (laughs) I mean, they struggle with the Cowboys. They struggle with Houston. And I, and I look at this team. If you coach the Steelers, there's obviously things you have to love. I mean, they develop players. The defense is exceptional. T.J. Watt, like, we all know that. But would it concern you that they, they can't really bury anybody? And when you get to the playoffs, those close wins very easily when you're facing a Mahomes or a Derek Carr or a Lamar Jackson, you know, or a Josh Allen. Would it concern you with Pittsburgh that they don't really put their foot down on teams and every game is seemingly up for grabs with five minutes left? Well, when they when they lost or when they beat Baltimore and they beat them the way that they did and they played as poorly as they did, I thought that was a really good indication. And, and I know it's a strange metric that, that said how, how good a team they were. To find a way to beat a good team when they played as poorly as they did now, that being said, to come back the next week against Dallas and have it come down to the final two minutes before you can you can win that game, that to me, you start getting a little bit concerned about the trend of not playing as well as they should have over the last few weeks. It's hard to criticize a team that wins and wins consistently, and, and maybe it's not pretty, and but you know, you, you do have some concerns about about the way they've struggled to me, the way they've struggled over the last couple weeks is is problematic. And now they're playing a Cincinnati team with Ben's got two bad knees. He's been out all week in COVID protocol. Who who knows what that's going to look like? By the way, Colts Titans wasn't the most riveting game, but we we have a three week stretch now where the Titans are kind of a mess. Their special teams are bad. They've got no pass rush. And it, it kind of feel, you know, I, I, I really like a lot about them, but I but I wake up this morning and I think did we just did they did they get lightning in a bottle at the end of last year schedule they won some close games early this year but they've been exposed by week seven eight nine ten you get exposed in this league and the titans are just it was a fun ride while it lasted but they, they're just not special well I, I would have said that's true if they had been exposed defensively or had been exposed offensively but that game they lost in a way that they typically win games you know to have the great fourth down stop that they did, and then the punter shanks the the punt. The Colts come down and score, and then the next the next play the, the punt's blocked. That's kind of the way that that the Titans have have won games. And I have a lot of respect for Mike Vrabel. I, I coached him. He's arguably one of the smartest guys I've ever coached. And his his recall of of, of defenses and things we did over over time was impressive. And and he's gonna figure out a way to maximize what they do have, like he did last season. And I know it's got to kill him to lose on special teams because that's how he started. He was a special teams player that we brought in from the Steelers. Um, he's, he's, I, I think that he'll get this straightened out and he'll maximize the, the talent that they have. And, you know, it's also a Thursday night game. There's, there's a limited amount of preparation that goes into it. This will look a lot different in two weeks when these two guys play again. Good seeing you, Coach. Eric Mangini, have a nice weekend. All right, you too, Colin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.